One day in CCD class, the teacher asked the children, why was Jesus' birth so special? And one bright little boy said, because Mary had immaculate contractions. Today I want to talk about the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It is the month of August, the month of the Immaculate Heart. Every month is dedicated to a special Catholic devotion or saint. For example, the month of March is the month of St. Joseph, the month of May of Our Lady. June is the Sacred Heart, and July the Precious Blood. So now we're in the month of August, and the reason why this is the month of the Immaculate Heart is because traditionally on the old calendar, August 22nd was the feast day of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now it is the feast day of the Queenship of Our Lady. And uh, the assumption is August 15th. So because we celebrate these two great days, the Assumption of Our Lady on the 15th and the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Queenship of Mary on the 22nd, the whole month is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart. What does the word immaculate mean? Macula in Latin means stain or sin. Immaculate means without stain, without sin. Mary's heart is pure. It's without stain, without sin. In the Bible, the heart refers to the whole person, as we heard in the responsorial psalm, create a clean heart in me, O God. It represents the whole person. For example, you might say somebody is kind-hearted. It means they they are a kind person, or they're soft-hearted, or they're hard-hearted, or that person is cold-hearted. It represents the whole person. The heart represents who that person is. So Mary is the Immaculata. She is the sinless one. She's the Immaculate Conception, and because of that, her heart is immaculate. And we know that in Luke, it says after they found Jesus in the temple, and Jesus said, you know, my must be about my father's business, because Jesus came home and was obedient that, to them. The Bible says, and Mary pondered all these things in her heart. So the heart of Mary is mentioned in sacred scripture. So it's very biblical. And it says, Mary pondered these things in her heart. Now the word ponder in the Greek means she tossed them about, as you would, in a sense, just toss a few things around the room. She tossed those things in her heart. She pondered them in her heart. Another word meant, she, in a sense, she juggled those things in her heart. Our Lady was the first juggler of sacred scripture because she tossed these things and thought about them and pondered them in her heart. Whenever you see an image of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, it's usually enveloped by flames, showing Mary's burning love for each one of us, her passionate love for us, her burning love for God. Also, you see oftentimes lilies or white roses representing Mary's purity. And then you see the sword, the sword of sorrow. And this is from the prophecy of Simeon. He says, one day a sword of sorrow will pierce your soul, will pierce your heart. And that occurred, of course, at the crucifixion. Jesus was already dead. He did not feel. It's the only wound that Jesus did not feel was the piercing of his heart by the lance, but it pierced Mary's heart. It pierced Mary's soul spiritually. So Mary's heart is called the immaculate and sorrowful heart. Mary's heart is sorrowful. We know of the principal sorrows of Our Lady, the prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, the losing of Jesus for three days in the city of Jerusalem, a meeting Jesus on the way of the cross, standing at the foot of the cross, Jesus being taken down and placed in Mary's arms and laying Jesus in the tomb. These are the principal sorrows of our Blessed Mother. And lastly, Fatima. At Fatima, Our Lady asked for consecration to her immaculate heart. The word consecrate means to set aside or to place, to set aside from worldly and profane things and to consecrate, to place for a sacred purpose. So we're called to consecrate ourselves to the immaculate heart of Mary so we can belong totally to the sacred heart of Jesus. So how do we do this? Well, Our Lady told us by praying the rosary, wearing her scapular, wearing the miraculous medal, and doing the five first Saturday devotions, coming to Mass every first Saturday of the month, going to confession once a month around the first Saturday, then praying the rosary, 
and then meditating for 15 minutes on one or more of the mysteries of the rosary. That's how we consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So we honor Our Lady, not only today, but this whole month, and try to grow in our devotion to the Immaculate Heart. So read the message of Fatima, read books about Our Lady, like the True Devotion to Our Lady by Louis de Mumford, and let's all consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, especially during this month of August.